All right, welcome to episode number 24, and today's topic is the responsibility of accountability. So if this is your first time viewing, welcome. My name is Amber Castillo-Wilson, your show host here, Upscale, and Fully Equipped, also the founder of Upscale for life.com. So does the word accountability kind of have that negative connotation with you? Kind of, does it kind of rub you the wrong way or do you feel a little anxious when you have hear the word accountability? Well, what I'm hoping to do today in this episode is to have you uh, give you a, a new definition and re help you redefine it in your mind. And so that way you actually see that it's something that can help uh, promote you and empower you and not feel perhaps intimidated. So um, if you feel that you need someone to hold you accountable in order to get something done, it's uh, in order to produce a particular activity or behavior, I'm here to let you know that it's actually something a little bit different. So um, the mistake that having the word accountability tends to be mistaken that it's something that is imposed on you and that something can someone can do to you well with this redefinition it um, it's gonna look like something that you actually own and that it's something that it's your responsibility and not something that someone can do for you or impose on you. And so sometimes uh, if we have a negative connotation about what accountability looks like, it can look like there's consequences. And actually there are some consequences to it as uh, I go further down into this particular episode. But if it's, uh, it's actually impossible for someone to hold you accountable for something. And so a particular e example could be like, well, you can hold your phone or you can hold a baby, but you can't hold someone accountable. So um, it's a matter of redefining it that, that it doesn't necessarily have... Um, it, it has ownership, rather. So it, you, it's a... A, a new definition if it's that it's something that you actually own and so I uh, equip this to something like steward stewardship and so this is something that we get to do we get to own it <clears throat> and that um, you don't want to view it as it has limitations and actually it's going to hopefully expand you to be uh, and empower you to exercise it and to bring other possibilities into your um, toolbox that you get to use. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's first define what the word accountable means. So we're looking at the word accountability, but the word accountable is defined as subject to the obligation to report or to explain or justify something. It's our responsibility and we have uh, some kind of answer to it. And so I know um, there's you know, raising three kids. I have three boys and this is something that I try to teach them and have them own their behavior in their actions. And so they always want to project it on their older or younger brother, <laughs> depending which one is in the argument. Well, he did this or he did that or didn't do that or he keeps us, uh, whoa, 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 let's, let's look back at where, what are you doing? So let's put the spotlight back on you, back on <clears throat> you as an individual. So that's the word of the definition for accountable. And that is, again, just to reiterate, it's the obligation to report or to explain, to justify something and have a responsibility towards it. Uh, let's look at the word stewardship because, like I said, this is part of ownership. And um, I'm, I'm uh, juxtaposing both of these words to, to have uh, similar responses and similar um, meanings. So the word stewardship is the responsible overseeing and protection of something. So considered worth caring for and preserving. So, uh, you know, God is ultimately the creator of what we have and we ha and he's the one who has full rights and full ownership and creating and what have you. So he is the owner and we happen to be the manager. We get to manage what he um, has given us. And so, we also get to be co-creators with him. 
And so, you know, it means as a, a, to be a steward of God is that we manage um, that what is what God has created and what He's allowed for us to have in our possession. <clears throat> And we are under his constant authority and that we get to administer the uh, various affairs that take place in our life. You know, relationships and finances and health and uh, families and uh, what have you. So the uh, characteristic, it could be. Uh, you know, if you're accountable, it shows that it, perhaps your life stance on something, and it also has uh, what you what you own. You own your stuff, right? So it's just a matter of um, when you show that you are responsible for your own stuff, whether it's positive or negative. Um, not not everything that that we do has a, a a, a pretty outcome, right? <laughs> and so we, there are consequences to the choices that we make. <clears throat> I'm sorry, excuse me. And so, uh, you know, another um, concept around that characteristic of accountability is being accountable for our thoughts, being accountable, as I mentioned already, for our actions and our behaviors, and to just be um, mindful of, of what we're doing with even our time as well. And so I know that's something that I have definitely been working on with um, being uh, aware of time and because it is a limited resource. And so I want to make sure that I, I use it respectfully. And that, you know, if we go back to the definition of stewardship, it's responsible of overseeing and protecting our time. So if we're just uh, willy nilly in our, our time, then when it comes to certain things that he has planned for us, then we feel that, okay, well, well, I don't have time for that because you're so expended on so many different directions. And, and perhaps you have a hard time saying yes or saying no. And so that can be a whole different topic, right, as far as uh, the concept and time. And uh, But to go back to this definition of accountability and our responsibility to what we have to this uh, resource. And so to redefine it is not as something that's imposed on us, although um, it, it's, I'm going to sound like, well, she, you said this at the beginning, but now you're kind of backtracking. So just kind of hear me out with this whole um, aspect of accountability, um, because at the end, I'm going to demonstrate that, yes, we as, um, you know, leaders and um, people in, in Christ, we can uh, build a body to where we help support. And so going back to the redefinition, so what that looks like here is it comes down to actual personal choice and your freedom in choosing. So the redefinition, just for you to, to clarify, is that it's freedom of choice and you get to choose. You have the option to do or not to do. And so that is the, the redefinition and it's a foundation of accountability um, to, to do it or not. So it's like, say for instance, well, um, you, there's things, it's not so much you have to do it or, you, you know, there's always a choice. So you're like, oh, well, I have to go to work today. Well, no, you don't. I mean, you can have the choice just to sleep in and, and not go to work, but there is a choice. And obviously there are some um, ramifications if you choose to do something or not to do something, right? So you're like, okay, well, then um, let me be a good steward of, um, you know, God's allowed me to have this job, so I'm going to, this is my domain that he's, he's given me, so I'm going to go to work and be a good steward of it, and so on and so forth. So again, it's just the freedom of choice, and so we get to do something. We get to make a choice into doing it, and so you have to, uh, when you have the feeling or the thought that you have to do something, it kind of feels like a burden, and so um, that can sometimes feel like a good 
good thing or it could be like a bad thing because you think of the burden that um, Jesus had for his time and that he he carried that burden for us right but it was something that like if he thought of like oh my gosh if I had to choose okay you know no one wants to have to do I mean look at the sacrifice that he had to go through but he bore that for us and so it was one of those matters that um, he had to be accountable with his with his life and that was his sacrifice to us and so um, definitely to be grateful for that and when we get to choose to do something we can actually uh, begin to stir up and use those gifts and talents that um, God has given us and we get to tap into his wisdom as well if you seek it and we get to use his strength as well so when we get to choose something it's like okay well I'm going to choose to do this and I may or may not know um, what to do in it but Lord I need some wisdom and so that's where you can pull in that strength as well from that and so um, I have 1 Corinthians 3 9 as a reference here and it's for we are God's fellow workers so his servants we get to work together as I uh, mentioned earlier like co-creators right and so you are God's cultivated field so imagine that he is that it's like a garden and that's his vineyard that we get to um, take <clears throat> and to um, steward and so it's God's building he gets to do that and and to understand that we are liable for that and so that's part of the accountability in in that uh, stewardship of stuff is that we are liable and we are in control of saying yes or saying no and to do something or not to do something so there are two things that ultimately we have control of and anything outside of these two things are really not up to us <laughs> and those two things are thoughts and actions and so we are able to have control of our own thoughts and what takes place up here in our mind and as well as our actions in our actions can be by way of our words but also um, doing going and doing something and that also looks like our behavior as well and so those are the two things that we are ultimately in control of and that we have to be liable for and accountable for so if we're just shooting out of the mouth um, you know negative stuff and in you know our, or our behavior and our actions are um, hurting someone then the, we have to be uh, accountable and liable for, for that and so with that the um, ownership and owning it and the to reiterate the, the part of it's an ownership that we get to take on for ourselves and we get to steward it and we get to do it on our own and we so we don't want to view that account accountability as a limitation and that and actually it has when you make choices like I said you get to tap into some uh, other possibilities of like okay well if I try this um, and there is no such thing as try it's either you do or you don't it's like okay let me try and move this um, item right here on the table it's like well there's no trying it's either you do move it or you don't so um, the word try is like well we can give it a whirl you know we can we can see how it goes and um, go from there so who are we accountable to so we kind of already implied that ultimately we're accountable to God and that um, we see I have a couple uh, scriptures here in reference that ultimately he we have to stand before him and give an account of everything that has transpired and so but we're also accountable to our family in uh, our employer to our children if we have children to our spouse and even to ourselves because um, being accountable to ourselves um, empowers us and be creates uh, self-esteem when you show up for yourself and when you say you're going to do something and you actually follow through with it there's going to be some uh, chemical reactions that happen inside the brain that you feel good about yourself and so those two scripture references uh, are in Romans 14 
and it's verse 10, which says, For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. And so, like I said, ultimately, it's to be accountable to him, right? And so, um, on to 11 and 12, it says, It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. So then, each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. So ultimately, he's the person that we are accountable to. And so the consequences of choices and can be empowering or they can be kind of frightening because if we're working in new territory, we're like, okay, well, I'm not really sure of this and I'm kind of intimidating. Maybe there's some fear and doubt. Um, I have definitely um, experienced that and it's a process to continue to work through um, as, as you grow in, in mature in the word. And so um, when are you to exercise this accountability? So it's to, you know, we do it when we, um, to help, like, as I mentioned, help uphold ourself, but also for others. It helps, you know, this is the part that I was mentioning that we get to help empower other people. And it's not so much that we're making them do something, but we're empowering them to, um, to help stir that energy and desire and um, promote that positivity for them. Perhaps they are in a low point right now. And so you get to breathe that into them and be like, hey, you know, I'm right beside you. I can help you with this. Or um, even over the phone conversation or via a text or what have you. And so it's empowering them also to have a choice and let them know that they are in control as well. Um, so like I said, it's we can help uphold each other as well as ourselves. And so we see this in Ecclesiastes 4.10 through 11, it says two are better than one. So because they are a good return for their labor, so for either of them falls down, one can help the other up. So like I said, we can help that other person um, be accountable and uh, ultimately they are the ones who have to take the choice and the actions. And we see this also in Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. So like I said, we're not ultimately doing the action for them, but we are helping, encouraging them to um, show what that looks like to be accountable for what it is that they are perhaps needing to be responsible for. And so um, having a network of sisterhood or a network of family um, or, you know, whether it's you go to your pastor or to, to someone who can help, uh, you know, kind of coach you and mentor you along in that uh, sense. And we do need that. Absolutely. Even you'll see some of the most successful people and leaders uh, in the nation have a group or a staff that helps empower them and helps encourage them as well. So. This is also what I do for my clients is that I can't make them do the work, but I tell them that there's 99.9% .9 guarantee that if you follow what I have for you and the process that I have for you, that there is going to be success. But it's up, for you, it's up to you to do the homework and to um, follow through and go through it all. So um, again, if we look at Ecclesiastes 4.12, it says, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves, but a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. So we get to bring the Holy Spirit into our um, work that we do together as I mentor my client, bring him in and ask him to just, you know, show up and d uh, give information to uh, my client and to me to help empower them. There's maybe certain directions to help and to guide them and then they are set off to go do them and so that if if we're just left to do it on our own it's going to be a little hard it's going to be difficult and we do have a tendency to get overpowered or overwhelmed and what have you so um, working as a group of three it tends to make things um, it we're not as easily broken down and so how can you be more accountable? Well, to start, it's just, let's just start at just examining your thoughts, examining, even at a subconscious level, sometimes we don't know what we're doing and what our actions and behaviors are because it's at a subconscious level. But um, just take perhaps a minute and consider, you know, are you doing or not doing something out of fear 
or um, I know for me doing or not doing something was because out of fear of uh, failure. And so having certain things that I've experienced in the past, I'm like, well, I failed at that, so why should I move forward and um, do that? Or um, this is probably going to fail also. So it's just a matter of kind of looking and examining that. And then also um, as one of the things that I recommend for my clients is to look at their life and to pick one area in their life health and when I speak of health, I, I speak broadly in reference to it can look at the, look like their mental, emotional health. It can look like their physical health, their spiritual health, their financial, their relational health. And to pick one area of that, of their health life, and then go there and, and um, make that a keystone area that you're going to be accountable for. So say it is your health and that you are struggling with um, having energy or you're just overstressed and you don't know how to manage stress. So then we go in and um, focus just on that. And that way, once we have that um, managed and you know how to uh, control and, and go through uh, the, the ups and downs of life and manage the stress, then all the other um, opportunities of the areas in your other health arenas start like falling into place. They start balancing themselves out and it's quite remarkable what starts happening and transpiring when we just use one area to focus at a time and use that as our keystone and then and then area uh, it winds up affecting the other areas. And so um, the other thing can you know, if you're asking yourself, okay, what's that one area look like for my, in my life, you know, it's like, okay, well, you know, are you tired of getting the same results? Um, do you feel like deep down inside that there's something more to life or you're just tired of the rat race or you feel that you can do better in one of those arenas of your health? And so if that's yes in one particular of those areas, then that's the area that you're going to want to focus and, and direct your attention to because you want to be accountable for that and then um, that helps breach into the other areas of your health as well. So like I said, this is where I help, um, this is this is where I come in, where I help stressed out, overwhelmed Christian women who just feel unhealthy and they help them gain more energy for their family and so they can live out their divine purpose. And so where is it this, that you can start, like, you know, as I mentioned, it's, to, you know, you can start looking at your, your thoughts and perhaps some of those subconscious knee-jerk reactions that happen, but you can also start uh, is to, if this is speaking to you, you can, you can recognize maybe there's a, a disobedience that you've had. And, you know, if, if you're recognizing that, then where we can start is actually acknowledging that, you know, it's, oh man, I, I do recognize that I'm not being accountable to you know, this area. And so there's, you know, and I'm asking Holy Spirit to reveal that to you now because we can give it, give you an opportunity to pray about it um, at the end here. And so if you recognize that there's an area that you may have not been fully, um, you've been looking at it as other resources have been contributing it to it and it's this way because of X, Y, and Z. But if you look back and you're looking at yourself and where your um, responsibility is into it and you're like, wow, I could see that if I would have done this or if I would have said that or kept this date or um, done, done it then, I could see that perhaps I would have had different results. And so you recognize that perhaps that area you're not being obedient to um, stewarding correctly. And so this is one where, area where you can start, like I said, with, with you know, speaking to that. And that way you're, you're going to be um, accountable for what happens. But like I said, we can go ahead and ask for forgiveness. I mean, our Father is, is wonderful at giving us opportunity after opportunity to just wipe our slate clean again and just to wash it over us again. You know, all the ones that, all the, the, the disobedience in the past and the present and the future. And so um, 
you know, if you feel that this is speaking to you, then we, we can go ahead and pray and ask for that forgiveness and to, you know, acknowledge that you have been uh, disobedient for perhaps the, your calling or you've noticed that you've been procrastinating because of fear or doubt or what have you. But let's go ahead and we can close in to a prayer and um, leave you with that. And so, um, so Father God, we just come to you and we are just seeking forgiveness for being disobedient and for um, being unaccountable to the provisions that you have allowed us to um, partake in. And so, Lord, we just um, want to be good stewards of what you have given and Lord, that in Psalms 84, 11, it says that you are the Lord that bestows favor and honor and that no good thing to be withheld from those who walk in blameless. So, Lord, we just um, lift this um, unaccountability of thinking that it's somebody else's problem and not ours, but we actually have a freedom of choice that you have given us, Lord, and that um, it's we get to act in free will. And so though where we have failed to take into account that we have the freedom of choice and that we don't have to be subjected to poor consequences, but um, we get to take role and action into our life and we give it to be co-creators with you and that we seek your will and your ways. Help us realize that the consequences of our choices, both the blessings and the negative consequences, but today we make the choice to move forward in owning the outcomes as we uh, live and as we take part in the provisions that you've gifted us and that we choose to be a woman of God in an obedient steward of the gifts and to just walk in righteousness. And so, Lord, we thank you for that opportunity and this new empowerment of being accountable for what we have. And so we thank you, and in Jesus' name, amen. So just um, as a recap, so to, to have the concept of the responsibility of accountability, and it's being responsible and the accountability of our choice. We have that freedom of choice. You have that freedom of choice, and you get to exercise it to um, use it to your uh, benefit, to help empower you and to help um, cultivate your destiny. And so just don't let life happen for you. You get actually get to be a participant in your, in, in your life. And so we get to do this by being accountable for what we do, how we spend it, and um, where we get to go with that and in our future. So I hope this spoke to you. If there's um, any questions, you're welcome to email me at amber at upscaleforlife.com or you can visit the fa free Facebook group at Upskill for Life group in Facebook. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television.